My name is Professor Mohamed Sobhi, Professor of Kent George Alexander University, uh, Chairman of CVRF Foundation, the past President of the Egyptian Society of Cardiology, Governor of East Chapters, International Assembly of ACC Chapters in Middle East and Africa, and Stand for Life uh, Ambassador in Africa. Uh, today, the Cairo PCR in, 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 in Egypt, uh, actually this is, we are just uh, uh, watching a first case with session in STEMI, which was a wonderful session. This team is by uh, the older group from the PCR, the Egyptian cardiologists, different scenarios. Regarding the, the conclusion of this team, actually, if you have a team, what, is, what, what we, you go, we go for a primary PCI. Uh, the guideline is changing nowadays that uh, primary PCI is the class one indication. It's, it's a must to do primary PCI. The second, if you have a, a lesion in the RT, you have uh, you have to pass the wire. After wire crossing, you, according to the different trials nowadays and the guidelines, uh, that you can do balloon dilatation. But after, if there is a big thrombus, uh, you can aspirate the thrombus. If there is a proximal lesion or early presenters, uh, you can also aspirate. Even after stenting, if still there is thrombus, you can aspirate. This is regarding the aspiration. Regarding uh, stenting, almost always drug diluting stents. Number Two, uh, uh, if you have a multi-vessel disease, which is usually in 60-70% of patients of the primary PCI, patients don't do it ad hoc, don't do it ad hoc. I mean, in the same time, you can do it in the index hospitalizations, and this is mainly in, 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 in different uh, uh, patients. But if you have a residual syntax score is less than eight, you can wait uh, in the new hospitalizations, maybe your financial uh, uh, problems. Uh, but don't do the CTO, don't do multi-vessel in, in patients. In patients with cardiogenic shock and STEMI, no need for uh, intraortic balloon and no need to do multi-vessel stenting, do only the culprit vessels. Culprit vessels almost always, so no culprit in, in multi-vessels, no culprit or CTO in multi-vessels, no culprit in cardiogenic shock and no intraortic balloon and no aspiration except if the wire crossings. These are the fundamental part of the, the sessions, particularly also the antithrombotics. If you have a patient with acute myocardial infarction, give him uh, antiplatelet isotecagrol 180 milligram or uh, colopitigrol uh, 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 600 milligrams with the aspirin together with the uh, 4,000 unfractuated heparin or uh, enoxaparin. And then they go to the patient to the cat lab immediately because of logistics, go directly to, 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 open, uh, to open the artery. And then you continue these drugs for uh, one year, except if the history of bleeding, you can give it for uh, six months only. In some kinds of uh, stents, you can make it only for uh, this stent for, uh, for one month. If the patient develop also atrial fibrillation, you have to have the triple therapy, and this is depending on three trials, they call the Pioneer, uh, Redual, and the Gosses trial. You can use the three drugs in uh, uh, one month or six months according to the history of bleeding. The patient has high his ischemic risk, so we can make it only for uh, six months and then uh, give two drugs uh, for, uh, for the rest of the year. And then after a year, you can choose which. which. You can use oil, either, still we don't have the answer using NOAC or oral anticoagulation with aspirin or P2Y12 with oral anticoagulation or NOAC. But if you have a history of bleeding, do a short duration and then continue with two drugs. This is the scenario or the summary of what's happening today with the STEMI session. I think uh, it's a good session by, the, by the, the great people of the PCR. Thank you very much.